Hello. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. How is everybody doing this morning? Please let me know if you can hear me well. Um, let me know if where you are joining us from. Um, I would love to read why you support Planned Parenthood and Planned Parenthood champions. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we're waiting on our candidate to join us. Um, she'll be on any minute. Uh, but I want to hear about you. I want to hear where you're watching from. I want to hear why you support the important work of Planned Parenthood Texas Votes. Um, I want to know if we have any first-time voters. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, waiting on our candidate. It'll be any minute now, but in the meantime, um, I'm going to thank you for being here. Hello, Luisa, Liney, Lean, Medi, Megan. How is everybody's morning going? I um, have some exciting swag that a few of you, ooh, hi there, Richland Hills. Thank you so much for being here. Austin, Megan, I too support a women's right to bodily autonomy. Hi there, San Antonio. I'm actually based in San Antonio. Um, I am a board member for Planned Parenthood Texas Votes uh, based, um, well, we have board members across the state, but I myself am based in San Antonio and Austin was um, home for me for more than 10 years. Um, and uh, Houston is um, undoubtedly one of my favorite Texas cities. So um, I'm so proud uh, to support all of that. Um, we're waiting on our candidate and as soon as she logs on, I will connect her. Um, and um, this will be short, it will be sweet, and it will be very energizing. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Um, I want to hear um, where any new members are joining us from. Um, I want to know why you support Planned Parenthood Texas Votes. I am actually going to log into mine, you know, and see what, what y'all see. Um, Oh, and there I am. So good morning, everybody. Is anybody um, here uh, brand new to uh, voting, to the voting process? Do we have any first time voters? Um, do we have any um, young people of color? Do we have um, proud members of the LGBTQIA plus and every identity in between and beyond um, who um, utilizes Planned Parenthood services. I wanna hear about it. Um, uh, let's see. Queen Jezebel says, from Austin, Texas, thank you for joining us, Austin. After RGB stuff, supporting Planned Parenthood is more important now than ever. I could not agree more. Um, I want to share a couple of the swag that I have. I put it up there for y'all, but um, I'm going to be choosing. Staff don't know this yet, but they do now. Um, I'm going to be writing personalized notes to at least three or four of y'all because I really like the number four. Um, and write personalized notes uh, for joining us, for supporting the critical work that Planned Parenthood Texas Votes does um, and mailing you out some sweet swag. One of my favorite things um, about being a Planned Parenthood Texas Votes board member, in addition to, of course, helping elect uh, reproductive justice um, and healthcare champions is having a youth voice on that on that. Board. Um, I am about four and a half years in um, to the board position and when I came on I was 28 um, and um, I cannot tell you the critical and meaningful um, 
opportunity that it means to me to um, have a youth voice, to be able to say that you're right. Swag does not vote, uh, but it sure as hell helps. And so throughout all of my meetings and opportunities, I love to collect things that many times are only accessible within. And so I have all sorts of fantastic sw swag for y'all. Um, and um, I'm gonna share it all. This one is an old, but very popular one. Um, I love um, have Spanish swag because we represent all um, so I'm going to check on my on our candidates I have a few more bumper stickers and fan ooh okay she is on so let me just add her Hi, Akila. Good Hi. morning. Thank you so much for making time to be with oh. us today. I'm so excited to talk to you on Instagram Live. Um, this platform specifically, I know you know this, is able to reach a lot more young people, a lot more young people that look like you and I. And I know that is incredibly important um, to you. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself because I have all sorts of preps uh, about it. And you know what? You're just this wholesome identity that I can't possibly sell myself. So uh, please. Well, thank you for that. And I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. Um, my name is Akila Basie, and I am running out here in this seat in West Houston for House District 138 so that we can fight for a majority for the Texas House where we can elect pro-choice speakers of the House and really fight for pro-choice bills and bills that encompass comprehensive health care for, for people. Um, and so, uh, and including reproductive, all areas and topics of reproductive health care. And so, um, a little bit about me, why that's so important is to me, because I am, as a law student, I was at that age where you, you're kicked off of your parents' insurance, but you're not quite where you have your own insurance yet. And I remember that I needed health care, and I was talking to my mom, and I was talking to my friend. Uh, they were, I was like, I don't, I, I don't know where to get health care. It's not going to cost me an arm and a leg. And my, my, my friend saying, go to Planned Parenthood. I said, well, what do you mean? Like, I don't, you know, I, I don't need Planned Parenthood. She's like, oh, yes, you do. And, and, I just, and then I learned about just the comprehensive health care that, you know, that you can receive. And then I went, and it was, it was amazing health care. It was attentive health care. And for a person like me who was in the position I was in, it was free health care. And I almost, I, I kept saying, what's the catch? When's the bill coming? Where's this? But it wasn't. And I was just thinking, wow, like, if we really have people who fight to rid, rid reproductive health of these stigmas and, and put of these stigmas, the amount of work, the amount of people that can be helped um, will be just amazing. And so, you know, I am, I am so proud to go from Planned Parenthood patient to now Planned Parenthood endorsed it to be a fighter for Planned Parenthood in the Texas House. Um, I am so excited and I'm so yeah. excited to be with you guys because that's what we're fighting for. We're fighting for people who don't always have that easy path, who don't always have um, everything just laid out for them. And so, I, you know, I, I, I remember that, I know that, and I'm so excited to be here and fight for that. Yes, I love that you share your own experience with needing Planned Parenthood services because um, I myself relate. I love being able to say that I'm both a Planned Parenthood Texas Votes Board member and a patient because that's the truth. I'm so proud to be able to say that I go to receive um, health care from an entity that I trust, that is without judgment, that is scientific based. I could go on, right? Um, but I, 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 I love that you are running, but I wanna know, um, tell us, was there a moment that you decided I'm going to run for office and what is what continues to power you to be in this campaign? Because times are hard. Yeah, they they are hard. That is true. Um, 
And, you know, uh, I'll tell you about uh, my moment when I was going to run. It was in a courtroom um, when I was fighting, uh, you know, fighting or arguing impassionedly against the opposing counsel. And um, mind you, at this time, I had been in a host of volunteer opportunities trafficking victims. I had been um, working as a mentor. I had been doing asylum work. I had been teaching adult literacy. So I was already knee deep in the problems in our communities. Um, and at this time, I remember fighting, um, I was fighting a case again, that uh, just a case of justice. And so I remember being told, uh, well, you know what, Akilah, the, the law is the law. You're in a courtroom where we practice the law. If you want to change the law, you need to go to the state house. And I was like, you know what, I'm sick of it. Sounds like a good idea to me. So, <laughs> so that really pushed me to run for office. Um, you know, and now it has been, it has been an exciting road. It has been a long road. And I think that you, what you say is like, you remember that why we're pushing it. And, and, I, and I think about it now more than ever. It's so clear when we're in this, uh, this, this COVID crisis, right? Uh, a crisis that could not easily be fixed, but could absolutely be fixed if we had a leadership that believed in science, that believed in, that they cared about people. Um, that we're worried about the people and not just the people that were in power. What a better place we could be in, right? Absolutely. You tell know? us, tell us about, if you want, um, or if you want to tell us more about yourself, but um, one of the reasons why you are a uh, Planned Parenthood endorsed candidate is um, because of, of your experience with Planned Parenthood in addition to your lived experience, which I think is important for governing, right? Representation beyond a checklist matters. You've, you've lived the struggles that Planned Parenthood patients today fight for. So tell us a little bit about, um, you are running against a candidate that has been in office for how many years, who lost the past election by how many votes? And what will you do when we take on the House with you there? Yeah, the race changed a little bit. Uh, the old Republican who uh, ran the seat, he actually, he actually retired a year to the date. Um, so, but now, um, honestly, we're up against an opponent who I think is um, much a, a much larger threat to healthcare mm -hmm. than even he was. Um, you know, uh, my opponent currently has, has, you know, she's made clear her stance on um, vaccinations and um, uh, just her lack of understand the need for health care and that, that larger community um the the, the community the communal and assistance um at first but now what we see is something that's that's been uh different um is that we see that now a lot of our our, our um, opponents see that health care comprehensive health care women's health care is a winning message and it's something that the, people care about uh, from a bond uh, a nonpartisan standpoint and so we now we, we see now that uh you know she's put out oh we i will fight for low income women to get cancer screenings and so my thing is i'm thinking what about all the other type of screenings in health care yes <laughs> yes so tell us about that planned parenthood um does gives non-judgmental care that includes the lgbtqia plus community and we expand to uh, gender affirming care most recently how do you support those communities and how do you vouch to fight for them i think i think that that's extremely important um yeah and i, I and i said she's fighting for health well, women's health care but i think you're right right we have to fight for health care period for all people across all genders or non-genders and you know, I think the way we fight for that first is we listen, um, you know, and, and I'm not going to be a person that says I have all the answers because I am not, I, while I am an ally of the LGBT community, I'm not a member. So I know I don't have the answers. And I think that that's what's extremely important saying, I don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. So teach me what, what I need to know. Okay. And I will ask, because what we need to make sure we're doing is we're treating people like people. We're treating people decently and we need to make sure that we are care of our communities and our and so I 
important. And so for me, it starts with listening and it starts with learning. And, you know, my expertise is in law. It's not in medicine. <laughs> it's not in Absolutely. I, I think listening is, is so critical. And I love that you mention it because um, we can't listen unless we, we respect these identities and trust that it is their voices that we are empowering, right? We're a vessel into the work. Um, Tell me a little bit more specifically about HD 138. What is Texas Health District 137? Tell us what it means to you. Yeah, well, you know, Health District 138, this is home. Um, I was actually born in the Spring Branch Hospital, which is no more. Um, and I've grown up in the Northwest Houston area my entire life. Uh, this district is what we see across Texas. It's just rapidly um, changing and it's rapidly diversifying. We just see so uh, you see different people across uh, demographics, ag across genders, across socioeconomic lines. But one thing is clear is that everyone wants effective leadership. And one of the main concerns, especially this pandemic, is health care that people, uh, you know, that all people are concerned about. And so, uh, you know, one thing is really cool is that I've had the opportunity to, uh, to talk to people from... Um, our more conservative groups with homeowners associations who still understand the importance of health care and, and you know, know that that's, a, that's something that we all need to fight for to I've been able to uh, talk to people and, 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 and find up to go visit Moss. Uh, I've gone to be able to talk to at my own church as well as to some members of our transgender community here. And I think that's the beauty of what that's what the suburbs look like now. It looks mm -hmm. like um, you know, so often we see now that there's this, there's this huge desperate need to try to paint communities like 138 as looking one way. But the truth of the matter is, we're all here. We're all, all here. Encompassing. Exactly, yeah. and all of our deserve to be heard. Yeah. So, about being an all-encompassing um, candidate today, um, mm -hmm. I know that you are one of the most extraordinary I'm biased here but with facts okay you are one of the most extraordinary Texas candidates running right now that has come from a very heavy community advocate you didn't just jump in and say I'm running for office because I want a title and a seat um, tell us about your community advocacy yeah, well, um, you know, you, you're, you're right there. And a lot of people always ask me, what's your political experience? And I say, well, I have more community experience than I do political experience. Um, but I think that's important. And so, honestly, my community experience started from the time I started. I would say before I started my career, but I talked specifically from when I did start as a prosecutor. Um, and, you know, one thing is that I've never been as a person who just takes things at the status quo, right? You go into the prosecutor's office and I knew I was going in there, and I knew the job of a prosecutor was to seek justice. But when I got in there, what I saw is that, you know, so much of what we're fighting for in these courtrooms have issues and consequences outside of it. Um, for instance, uh, in particular, I started working, my sister works in human trafficking, that's how I got involved. We were asking victims of human trafficking to come and testify against someone. Well, what if the case doesn't go well? And what if somebody gets off? And they're back on the street. So we, we don't offer that protection anymore. We haven't given them any resources to, uh, you know, have a better life. We haven't given them that ability to affirm themselves and move on. Um, we're looking at victims of domestic violence. And, you know, we're asking them to, again, testify against something, someone. Uh, we're not giving them those resources outside of our courtrooms to, to be safe and protected. And so... That was extremely important to me. And that was kind of my, that was my turning point mm -hmm. in saying that I need to be in the community because we can't ask people to do this and then not show up for our community members. And so that got me with working with victims of human trafficking, doing pro bono uh, work, teaching them their rights, uh, helping them find those services, uh, you know, um, also working with victims of domestic violence, uh, helping them, uh, you know, find shelters. And, and you know, I guess to, to, you know, I'm like, things that I always do is I typically, I like to give out old clothes, right? Like uh, my older suits or they're not, they're not old, because, you know, but you know what I mean? Like things like helping them, thinking about those things, like what would I need if I were in their position? Mm -hmm. I'd, want, I'd want to be able to dress like 
into an interview and I belong. So those are all things that I started doing, right? Um, and then volunteering, getting on that ground, honestly, putting on the mic, putting down the cameras and, and, and talking to people, listening to stories and getting out there. And so that's what really started there. And then also um, what, I, what I find is that it's always one thing leads to Right, so my my my, uh, my community activism is, is all kind of it looks a little scattered, but it's not because it's always well. I started working with human trafficking victims, and then I saw a need in uh, to teach adult literacy. And when we we're teaching adult literacy, we saw how many people needed help teaching ESL because of, there was just this war on people's identity, and they were just so scared, which is sad to, uh, you know. Uh, they just want to assimilate so much. And so I started teaching ESL and that led me to, uh, you know, doing pro bono work, doing asylum and then, you know, with asylum with children. So everything kind of leads to another, even though it seems scattered. And, um, you know, but what, one thing I realized is that people really want the help and people are willing to help themselves. But we have to have a government that prioritizes people in the community so that they can actually get that help and move to the next step. Yes, you say scattered, but from one community advocate to another, scattered to me is a definition for a better elected official, one that in addition to listening and respecting, because that's essential, one that you can you can say a handful of things and there is so much that you can transmit in a message from just what you're saying they know it because they've lived it right you've been in the trenches with so many different communities and advocating for them um so i don't know maybe scattered is a new elected officials that we need thank you so much for your work um tell us a little bit about uh, law school and and your career today and how that's going to um help you in the next ledge session I will, oh law school oh goodness <laughs> That was a time for sure. Um, but, you know, I would say this, right? I, law school, I was, I was, am actually the only attorney in my family. I was the, the first attorney. So law school was very uncharted territory. I think it would be challenging for anyone in general. Um, but, you know, going there, it, it was, it was a huge, it was a very huge learning curve for me um, to just completely look at things from a more analytical uh, strategic approach than um, always just the uh, more of an emotional approach. Um, and I think one thing is that I saw is that a lot of times we're looking at, there were issues in the law that were that were void of that emotion, that social justice element. And it was black and white. And I said, this is not this is not what we need. We don't need more lawyers uh, who, who look at things black and white. Mm -hmm. We need, you know, I see one of my friends here, he just wrote, okay, he helped me through a lot of law school so oh, I just see he wrote it there he knows thank you truth. sir for helping her through <laughs> <laughs> we're here to do the rest of the work yes. but you know making sure that we had people who understood the social elements and implications mm -hmm. of those laws um seeing that what we write down in that black and white that it has real effects on real people and making sure that we have someone in the state house who knows that um, these are not just theories and ideas that we're putting in these big books that we, we codify and pass out. No, everything that we write, it matters. And it matters so much to, to Texas residents. And so we have to keep that in mind. Um, and that's one thing that really, really, um, you know, with law school that, that I continued on with my career is that, like I was saying in the DA's office, is that what we're doing here, yes, these are, these are cases and they, they matter. Um, but what they, the effects on the community and the people matter even more mm -hmm. and we not lose sight of that. And so, you know, one thing is, is that I think it's so important that we have people in the legislature who know that laws that may look good in theory can absolutely be fatal in fact mm -hmm. when applied to the community at large. And so that literally is what spurs me. And I think it's so important that we get people in the state house who understand the, just the realness behind absolutely what you said this and i'm gonna quote you because i'm all about the quotes um i'm a word person you said um literal literal livelihoods matter right and i want everybody watching with me to please uh share this message in akila's campaign 
um, with with a first time voter, a new voter, a younger voter, a, any and every voter in your family about the importance of why literal livelihoods are what are at stake at electing candidates like Akila Basi. Um, uh, to wrap up a little bit, because um, I, I, there's, there's so much that I could rave about you. I, I, we promised that this would be an energizing morning, and it is. But one of the reasons why it is so energizing is because this is exactly, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but this is what currently the state legislature representation looks like, right? Can you all can you read that well? Beyond partisanship, right? What does an anti-choice candidate majority in the state legislature mean, right? Um, could you tell us a little bit about uh, why you as a candidate support Planned Parenthood? Why to you it is important to um, expand access to reproductive health care amidst a public health care crisis? Um, and why specifically is important to uh, Houstonians in HD 138? You know, I think it's important because healthcare is justice, um, you know, and I am a social justice warrior. I think if you are not able to take control of your body, there is no other area in your life in which you're going to be able to mm -hmm. take control. There is no other area in your life in which you're going to be able to excel. And when our community doesn't excel, I mean, when people don't excel, our community does not excel. So I am I am so proud to be a, a pro, a pro choice or pro, uh, you know, pro health care uh, candidate to make sure that we're expanding reproductive health care. Because we also that when you do that, you also have more confidence in who it is that you are. Uh, when you have more confidence in who you are with your reproductive health choices, one, we see issues that a lot of people fight about, um, they go down, right? Um, which I think is really funny is that uh, when we talk about access to abortion particularly, is that everyone says, oh, to, um, you know, we want to end abortion by getting rid of any uh, agency or that, that that has abortions, uh, you know, that has access to abortion. Well, we see that the more access that you have to health care, reproductive health care to those services, the lower the numbers, because you have that autonomy to make those decisions, to make those health. Mm -hmm. um, you, you prompted this. Um, this oh, is a I quote <laughs> from our national uh, president, right? Um, and okay. it says, we share the belief that you can't truly be free until you have control over your own body, your health and your future. That is why we're in this fight. Akila Basie, we are so proud and honored and grateful because this is not your fight alone. Um, and yet black women re over and over and over again, continue to lead the fight for us. We're so honored that you're running. You're, we're so honored that you're fighting for for this belief and uh, what it means to everybody else in, in your district and beyond. Um, call to action. Um, all of this energy, all of this education it, it is important, but it's just one part of it, right? We have to, um, um, I, I, I read something this morning, my, my first morning of meditation in, in election time is, um, is activism podcast. I'm still in bed and this stood out. It says, um, activism is only people activated. Tell us. How can our viewers and the people that will see this after this live, because we will share it across all platforms, um, how can we support your campaign? Uh, tell us your website, tell us your handle, tell us where we can well, plug in with you. Oh, okay. Well, great. No, I'm happy to do that. So um, if you're here, you're already on my Instagram is Akila Basie, um, at Akila Basie. My Twitter is at Akila Basie and Facebook is facebook.com backslash Akila Basie. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. I And we'll have this uh, on the, oh, go. You pause okay. for one second. You're good. Sorry. I made it very simple. What we need uh, more than anything is to make sure we're getting that message out to the people. One thing that we have found in our primary that we were outspent four to one, what we have found when we came out 80% of the runoff is that when we talk to the voters, when we share that message, 
we it is a we, we win right people are ready and ignited and excited for change for texas and so how do we get that message out it's one by sharing and liking and interacting on facebook and then two most importantly it's by helping us get out there with phone banks that can happen from anywhere across the nation we have it's all virtual you can pick it up and call we have a hard time block walking now because we are going to make sure that what we're doing is we're, uh, mm -hmm. we're campaigning safely we're all uh, about the health exactly 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 <laughs> literally that we are and so you know but it's making sure that we're having that that touch with each each person and then activating those voters so if you can help us phone bank if you can help us by sharing our message across social media um, these things help us sign up to to write postcards things of that sort or if you just want to get involved honestly um, just send us, if you go to the website and set, sign a volunteer, we will just send volunteer opportunities as they come out. Different things happen. Yes. And also something that's really exciting is that we have um, uh, this coming week on the 28th, we are phone banking with Beto. Anyone across the nation can jump, jump on with us and maximize that vol those volunteer efforts because every volunteer we bring, we get another volunteer um, from Beto. So those are ways in which we can definitely just help sharing that message so that we can flip this seed. Somebody said, let's have a postcard writing party. I'm all for it. Um, I know Plant Parenthood Texas Votes hosted a, a phone bank for you um, a few days ago, and uh, we hope to continue to, to work with your campaign. I want everybody to know that this uh, page's link will link you to other opportunities like Aquila Basie's um, efforts, her campaign efforts, along with other Plant Parenthood champions please check our bio link um, out and um, we'll be able to plug you into all those opportunities. Please follow her. Speaking of social media, um, I love your hashtag backing Basie because it is so millennial-ish, uh, young professional-ish. Um, and, and so everybody watching, please use backing Basie as her follow the hashtag and, and, and support her. Um, I want to remind everybody that um, registration deadline here in Texas to vote in the November 3rd presidential election, which Kavi is not just you voting for a new president, but it is voting for critical house and local races like Aquila Basis in HD 138. Um, that deadline to register is October 5th. The best thing you can do today is make sure that you and everybody in your household is registered. And if not, please register. Um, election day is November 3rd, but early voting will begin a lot sooner. Um, I have so many more questions that I'm going to take off site, um, offline, but any last final words you have? for anybody that um, has joined us and will be watching this after? Well, you know, I just want to say thank you guys so much for being active and engaged in this election. Uh, we hear it all the time, but this election is truly the election of a lifetime. We stake with uh, the passing of RBG. We see what's at stake when we see people trying to gut our rights. And I need you to understand that when we're talking about laws, these are not theoretical conversations that we have on Facebook. These are not little ideas that we have uh, where we talk amongst our friends, but they have real meaningful impact. And we have to make sure that we have legislators and, and, and politicians and leaders across the board who understand that personally, politically, and uh, in a larger communal sense. So please make sure that you you vote with in mind. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We look forward to continuing to support your efforts. Thank you so much, Akila. Thank you. You guys Thank you. Bye. All right. So I'm just going to wrap up with saying that, again, the deadline to register to vote is Monday, October 5th, um, and that um, I encourage you to please visit our bio uh, link to uh, follow more Planned Parenthood Texas Votes opportunities. And um, unfortunately, Instagram, somebody tell Instagram developers that um, live uh, comments do not get stored with our videos, but uh, we will be posting this, uh, the recording of this video on the IGTV, as well as other social media platforms afterwards. If you uh, share it and comment why you vote 
why you will vote, why you pledge to vote for uh, Planned Parenthood champion candidates like Akila Basie. I will personally get some sweet Planned Parenthood swag for you. And I shared this earlier, but I have it all. Um, stickers, bumper stickers, magnets, um, you name it. Um, um, I love connecting one-on-one uh, -on -one with uh, Planned Parenthood Texas Votes. Uh, volunteers, which in my biased opinion are the absolute best. So thank you again for joining us. Please share it um, and let's stay in touch. Bye everyone. Have a good day.